Welcome to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. Whether you're 25 or 45, there's bound to be a discussion that you care about. Our mission is to share practical ways to find God in your everyday life. And now today's host, Chris Lang. For many of you listening today, my nightmare will sound familiar. It was a typical sunny but busy work day. I'm driving along minding my own business when suddenly a car pulls out from the side road right in front of me. With less than 10 feet to brake, I slam into the side of the car at 40 miles an hour and the hood of my little Honda Civic folds right up to the cabin like an accordion. With no airbag, my head feels like it'll come off my shoulders and fly right through the windshield. Instead, it swings wildly down the from the steering wheel and chin meets chest with full force. The moments that follow seem like an eternity and as I realize I'm not dead, I'm actually thankful. But the journey of chronic pain will last 10 years until God sends a profoundly simple answer. Hello, my name is Chris Lang and today's topic is realigning your soul. We'll discuss the ways that pain and problems force us to evaluate our spiritual alignment and biblical principles that will help you realign your soul with Christ. I'd like to introduce the guest in the studio with me today. Uh, Dr. Jack Linnady is here from Uptown Chiropractic, uh, and also Terry Hall, who is a uh, public relations and marketing consultant here in the Orlando area. Welcome, guys. Good to be here, Chris. You know, this, uh, <clears throat> this story that I shared actually happened. This is no fabrication, and certainly we know that there's millions of people in the world who suffer every moment from chronic pain. And, uh, in fact, in the United States alone, I read uh, recently where it said that over 50 million people mm-hmm. in our population live every day with some level of chronic pain. So, uh, and even if you don't live with any chronic pain, I'm I'm certain that most of you listening today know of someone who's struggling with chronic pain. So I pray that this program will will encourage you if you've tried everything else that medical technology can offer you and and nothing seems to work, because I know that's what it was in my case. During my 10 years after my accident, uh, I tried all kinds of things like physical therapy and steroid injections in my spine, which I don't recommend for any of you if you don't like needles. <laughs> Humongous needles, oh. man. Um, but you know what? You will try anything mm-hmm. if you're caged, uh, ca- you feel like a caged animal with your chronic pain, and certainly that's where I was. And uh, <clears throat> several people recommended a, a, a chiropractic, a certain kind of chiropractic. I had tried the manipulation, the snapping of the neck, and the, the back twisting, and all the things that traditional chiropractic offers, in addition to, to physical medicine, um, uh, physical therapy. Uh, and so I was a little bit uh, sheepish and certainly hesitant to try uh, w- uh, an upper cervical treatment uh, on, the, on the spine. And uh, I was recommended to Dr. Lenity actually several years ago. And so, uh, Dr. Lenity, why don't you talk to our listeners and share with them a little bit about your background, what makes your treatments different from traditional chiropractic, so they can kind of get a context for our conversation today. That, that'd be, I'd love to. Um, you know, your uh, experience in uh, many of my patients, um, you know, it's pain that brings them to the chiropractor's office. But uh, my experience really was um, quite naturally, I was the stepson of a chiropractor. And uh, so I remember just growing up with chiropractic at home. And, uh, you know, I may uh, go play soccer one day and, uh, you know, have a rough go at it. And I'd come home and say, Dad, I need an adjustment. And, uh, you know, it was just quite uh, natural for me to have chiropractic. So I never really had those um, issues, lots of pain, you know. But, um, of course, that's what I see mostly. Um, you know, chiropractic is um, really concerned about um, getting in alignment uh, the structures of the spine. And, um, and structure dictates function. Um, you know, just like your car, if it's out of alignment uh, structurally, it's not going to function as well. So um, it, it, there's a lot of similarities with that in the spine. If, if it's not structurally sound, um, you won't function as well, you won't feel as well. Um, things just won't operate as optimally as they could. So, so how did you get into this specialty within chiropractic? What makes it different? Well, the upper cervical spine, because the relationship to the brain and spinal cord and brainstem in that area, um, it has the most 
um, neurological input of anywhere in the spine. So all of the all of the neur all the neurons and the the from the brain stem that go down to talk to the body come exactly. through that first cervical vertebrae that yeah. connects? Yeah. A simple way to think of it is if I want to move my hands, if I want to move my legs, I have to think about that first, right? It travels down from my brain through the top of my spine into the nerves and to the rest of my body. So really the center of that uh, beginning is up uh, right behind the skull, right at the top, right under the brainstem. So I just decided early on in practice that that was the most important place and let's start there. And I've been practicing in that area ever since. And how long, and where did you learn this from and how long has this been in existence, this concept of, of and I'm assuming you're talking about for those listening, because I know the answer, <laughs> but it, it's this focus on that one verte cervical vertebrae. How, how long has that been around, that philosophy? Well, it, the philosophy in, in the early uh, beginnings started in the 40s, um, but uh, th over many years it's become what it is today in the form of the NUCA procedure, which is an acronym for um, National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. National so Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. Right. And that's a special training within chiropractic? Exactly, it's more of a specialty within the profession. Um, so I really learned the, the procedure after graduating from chiropractic school um, and really becoming, um, and I'm still, still on my journey, becoming a master in this type of adjusting because it is, uh, a very specific work. It takes a lot of discipline to learn it effectively and then to bring that um, to patients. So. Okay, so, so a patient learns about this and they come into your office. What's it like? What, is, what do you use to explain the concept to a patient? If I'm your patient, I walk in the first day. What, what do you say to them? Well, one of the things, you know, so many people have an idea about chiropractic already. And so you have to kind of break down those barriers and say, um, you know, it's not a hard procedure that's twisting and cracking your spine. It's very specific and very gentle. Um, so you kind of kind of, you know, take somebody from where they're at and, and, and begin to explain those things. Um, but then I really make it simple and I just kind of explain how, you know, the, the weight of the head, which is 10 to 14 pounds, which is the weight of a bowling ball. Do you have some kind of thing that you show patients when they, when they walk in? Actually, I do, Chris. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. This is a bowling ball. It's 11 pounds. And um, what I always, I actually give this to patients. I let them hold it. I let them see that this is how heavy their head weighs. And uh, almost invariably, people it's are just too. surprised. Yeah. Terry, are you getting a workout already? Yes, I am. Yeah. I am getting a workout. <laughs> so I, I take this bowling ball and I have them hold that. And I say, you see how heavy their head is. It's sitting on your neck, which is really like a broomstick. So you have a, uh, a 10 or 14 pound bowling ball sitting on a broomstick. And what can happen when that head weight falls off the center of the broomstick? It really pulls. It pulls the rest of the spine out of alignment. And then the rest of the body is trying to adjust for the fact that that, that head is out of alignment off center on, right. top of the, on top of your neck? Right. It's physics. It's really leverage. And what happens is, you know, when the uh, mass is off its center of gravity it will cause the rest of the spine to compensate to correct that center of gravity. So you gravity. can usually, when, when you first look at a patient, you can usually tell, even without getting them on a scale that you call an anatometer, right. that measures the weight distribution between your feet, right? Yes. And the amount that your pelvis is maybe twisted mm -hmm. because of your head being off center. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also measure the length of their legs, correct? That's to right. see if they're out of alignment that way. Yeah, one of the things you know a listener could do is just stand in front of a mirror, turn your head left and right, and then look straight ahead and just kind of look at your head or have uh, someone else look at you. And you can see that the head is tilted or twisted, and you can see that you know the misalignment is there. And what would be better is to have that head and neck and the rest of the spine into a better position. Now, I got to tell the listeners, <coughs> when I first came to you, I was not an invalid. I mean, I had run six marathons after my car accident, so, so I was staying active, and it's probably providential that I stayed active. But when I came to see you that first time, uh, the weight distribution between my legs was 10 pounds different. And, um, and, 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 I, and when I had that first adjustment where my head was actually corrected on top of my neck, I could actually turn my head for the first time without a knife stabbing me in the side on my way home, and I wept. Mm. 
I wept because it was so profound after 10 years of not being able to turn my head at all. And that's just one example of the ever-present pain that people are dealing with. Um, and I can think of other people that since my healing process began of getting in alignment, I have referred many people, and, and Terry, Terry, you're one, of, you're one of several that I've had the privilege to refer to Dr. Lenity for, for treatment. And by the way, before you share your journey, Dr. Lenity, how many people are trained like you to be able to do this kind of treatment when people are listening today? Can, can they go find someone like you where they live? Yeah, the best thing to do would be to, to uh, go online to the NUCA website, which is N-U-C-C-A dot org okay and um locate a doctor um and that's uh there's doctors all throughout the country um throughout the united states yes are there any trained outside of the united states that you know of in australia can canada different places there is in canada um and there's some others throughout the country um there needs to be more okay uh, you know that's well, we're trying to get the word out <laughs> we, we really are um uh, any, any other uh, suggestions uh, for people and maybe if they have a chiropractor maybe they can start studying it at least if somebody sees this program and wants their chiropractor to learn about it? Yeah, absolutely. They should ask their chiropractor, uh, do they know anyone that specializes in the upper cervical area? Um, and just what he may or may or hear, he or she may think about that and go from there. Terry, tell us a little bit about, you know, the dynamics and how God led you to your healing journey. Well, Chris, my, um, my story is similar to yours, and yet it's a little bit different as well. Mine also started out with an automobile accident. Um, actually, almost nine years ago, I was coming out of my uh, subdivision, um, and I was T-boned uh, on the driver's side. In fact, uh, they T-boned me right um, above the wheel on the driver's side. In fact, I would not be sitting here if it had been a little further back, actually, on the passenger side, because it pretty much totaled the car. And when it hit the car, it spun it around in the middle of the road. And it violently, it was so, the spin was so violent that the bolts that held the driver's seat that I was in, the back, two back bolts and the one on the front left side broke. And so when the car stopped, I was actually facing the um, passenger side window and my neck was just thrown and twisted around like a, like a whip. Um, but actually, the interesting thing of it was is that I stepped outside. The individual who ran into me actually was worse off, had to go to the hospital, but I got outside and everything. And the so car you thought you were okay. Yeah, I really thought I was okay. The car was pretty much totaled, but um, I didn't have very much pain at all, just a little bit of residual pain on the left side of my neck and down in my shoulder for about um, a week or so, and then everything went away, so I thought I was fine. Uh, but then about a year and a half later, um, I started having um, dizzy spells, um, really bad vertigo, and it was really bad. And first I thought it was an inner ear infection or something. And, but it just got worse and worse, and so finally I started... Hold that thought, Terry. Sure. We're going to go to a break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Hope on Fire. Welcome back to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. I'm here in the studio today talking about our topic, Realigning Your Soul, with Dr. Jack Lenady and Terry Hall. Now, uh, during the break, uh, Dr. Jack was saying, hey, I'm on the edge of my seat. What comes next, Terry? <laughs> well, I Where was, were we in the story? Uh, at the break, I was talking about how I was starting um, to get dizzy after about a year and a half uh, after this accident. And I didn't know what was going on. In fact, I'd have some of the, what you would call true vertigo, which is the whirling kind, where you know, you're laying in the bed and the bed's flying around. But much of the time, I would have a very unsteadiness where I, would, I couldn't walk straight. I would you know, run into walls and it... Uh, pretty soon it got to the point where I couldn't function. I couldn't work anymore. I wasn't able to drive for about three years. And actually, for about the next five years, I struggled with this. Um, you know, not knowing what it was, you become very concerned. I started going to every doctor. I went to neurologists. I went to cardiologists to see if it was my heart. I went to eye, ear, nose, and throat doctors um, and had something called electrostagmogram where they, um, you know, measure the f fluid in your inner ears, and I wouldn't wish that test on anybody. It was awful. Mm -hmm. So, it, and, But no one could come up with anything, and, and finally one of my GPs said, well, maybe it's all in your head, and I said, yes, it is all in my head, but I know that there's something wrong, and it's not all in my mind. So so this dizzy, this, these dizzy spells got so bad, it was hard to leave your home. Yeah, and then uh, the secondary stuff was, as it got worse, I started becoming agoraphobic. I couldn't leave my home because I didn't know when it was going, going to happen. Um, I also 
also became, I started having panic attacks, anxiety attacks, and so I was put on all different kinds of medicine for that. And one of the things which I love is my church. I'm very active in my church, and I wasn't able to go to church anymore because large crowds would trigger um, these panic attacks mm -hmm. and also these mm -hmm. vertigo things. So, mm -hmm. you know, after about four and a half, five years, I didn't know where else to go. I'd, I'd exhausted every doctor and, and didn't know what to do. So I just one night, I just cried out to God. I said, you know, you're not supposed to give us more than we can handle it, but I don't think I can handle this anymore. Yeah. I said, you know, I need to connect with someone. So it was about that time that uh, my church, uh, Forest Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church, got a new pastor, uh, Derek Morris. And so someone put me in contact with him, and I'm not one to go and get counseling from pastors or anyone or anything. I just try to handle my own problems. But, you know, I guess God was trying to tell me, well, it's time you need to do that. So I reached so Derek reached out to you as a yeah, friend and yes. invited you in. Right. To, invited to me connect. In, and I had some counseling. Um, and I was sometimes that was the only place I would go to during the week was I'd be able to struggle to get to his office and have counseling and then go back home. But finally he invited me into a men's group. And of course, I had known you um, as an acquaintance, but I really got to know you in the group. And when I shared my story about this, you says, wow, that sounds like my journey. You need to see my upper nucleus specialist, Dr. Jack Lindy. So I was actually going to go to another. I was you were scheduled to go to another doctor's visit that day, weren't mm -hmm. you? I was going to go to a regular chiropractor. I was going to try that route. I hadn't, but I, I was just, I felt um, very strongly to cancel that and to make an appointment with Dr. Lindy which I did. And so it was a couple of days later, I was in his office and, uh, uh, this is an amazing individual. I mean, he helps so many people and, and in so many ways. And it's a two and a half hour workout with x-rays and, and all sorts of different things. And uh, so, um, you know, I really needed some help. I was really uh, twisted and a lot of things were going on. So you were tense when you were there yes, I in was, the office. Yes, I was tense and I didn't know what was going on. So he lays me down. And if you understand his adjustments, they're very, they're very soft, sort of like just pressures on the side of, of the neck at the, at the C1, I believe it's uh, uh, vertebrae and stuff. And so, so you're laying on your side. Laying on my side, but yet I'm tense. And he says, Terry, you've got to stop being so tense. Just, he said, I know you've been through a lot, but just let go, relax, and let me do what I need to do. Just surrender to what I what I need to do, and, and we'll be able to, to help you. So after he did that, it was just like, uh, you know, I just relaxed. So and you took a deep breath. I took a deep and breath. And consciously, mm -hmm, and just... You can consciously sense the tension, yeah, can't I can, you? I can consciously sense the tension going away, and he did the uh, adjustment, and I have to share this with you. Um, then after he got me up, he said, let's go on the, um, what do you call it, the anim, um, anatometer? Anatometer. He <laughs> said, to let's measure, because I've been way off. I wasn't 10 pounds off. I was, I was like 20 pounds. It was, it was really bad. That's why I was walking into walls and stuff. And so the first time he put me on there and had me step back down, it was just, it was like an epiphany. I was, for the first time in nearly seven years, I felt grounded. I felt aligned. I actually felt safe, like I could walk on the earth. And uh, it, I just started crying. Yeah. You know, it so was just so emotional. emotional. And, and to his credit, he teared up too. That's the kind of guy he is, you know. And I'm By sure the way, real men can cry. <laughs> I've, 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 I've well, then I was a real know. man that day because I really, I really cried. So anyone who's listening who thinks it's a wimpy thing, uh, you know, Jesus wept. Yeah. And he was the man of all men. So, mm -hmm. so you wept there, and yeah. the doctor was empathetic, yes. and he felt, the, he felt your excitement yes. and your relief. Absolutely. And then what happened to you? A and then, you know, I just continued to, um, you know, to go to him and I continued to heal and my life just began to open up. You were saying you were like a caged animal. Well, I'd felt that way too. Maybe not so much caged, but just like the walls had been growing down and down on me until I was in this small little space and I couldn't go anywhere or do anything. And my life was, I felt was basically over. But a as I started going to him and started getting better and the dizziness was gone, my life opened up again. I was able to function. I was able to drive again. I was able to be get back to my business and my work again and meet with my clients. I was able to get back to my church and my church family and to do the things that I enjoy there. And my whole life opened up again, you know. And it's because I had, you know, I had found the right person through the providence of God, but also because I had I had surrendered in a way too. You know, I don't think I would have done as well if I'd always been tense going to him uh, for these treatments because I'd been so tense and so for so long about everything that was happening to me. Okay, let's jump in here. Lifestyle recommendations. You get an adjustment. Dr. Lenity, you normally give feedback, don't you, to patients for their uh, kind of a personal prescription for lifestyle? Absolutely. Uh, you know, a big part of why Terry's done so well is he's taking care of his lifestyle or his physical needs and getting adjusted. Um, he's also taking care of his spiritual needs, emotional needs. Um, I was listening, when listening to your story, 
uh, you know, as a reminder, <laughs> you know, it's been a couple of years yeah, since we started that, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, the, you kind of went from a physical trial with the accident and right. it just spiraled down into a very um, emotional, Emotionally, mentally, mental. you know, Absolutely. spiritually attacked. I Absolutely. mean, I, and, and with an adjustment and obviously, you know, God's leading you, you know, to get that. Um, it, so many things started going in the right direction. Right. Um, but that's a, that's, that's a process. In other words, mm -hmm. I guess the reason I asked the question is some people are listening today and they're probably wondering, uh, what is this? Sounds like a magic bullet. I mean, I come from a medical family. My father's a medical mm -hmm. doctor. And, and uh, when, I, when I first got, when this first got described to me, I just kind of laughed it off. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. It seemed too good to be true. But you've got two living, walking testimonies to the idea that it works, not just the idea, but the proof that getting your head into alignment with your body on top of your neck can, can solve a lot of issues. And mine was, was chronic physical pain in certain areas of my body. His was dizzy spells. Mm -hmm. and, and I've referred others to your practice, some of who have had lower back pain, some have had hip pain. Mm -hmm. And so the alignment works. But the question is, is it a magic bullet? Mm -hmm. And is there a role the patient plays in the process? Absolutely. Uh, That's yeah. what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, oh, the exercise, eating correctly, um, um, just overall staying uh, in alignment. You know, when you're at the computer, I mean, the computer now is really having a, uh, its toll on people sitting at hours a day at a computer. So it's getting up, it's taking breaks, it's having a good position. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do to to uh, negate even the problems of getting out of alignment. And that's what I like about Dr. Lindy. He's not just someone who does an adjustment and you go off. He's a true educator because mm -hmm. he's um, told me many times in the work that I do in public relations and marketing and editorial services, I'm at the computer a lot and I'm writing it and stuff. And he's told me, you've got to get up after every 15 or 20 minutes. You've got to move around. You can't just stay there humped over. And I've done that for literally hours and hours at a time. He says, that's just not good for your alignment. And so I've learned a lot of mm -hmm. things from him that's not just the adjustment. Well, and, and with a few minutes we have left, let's talk about the spiritual applications to this. Uh, you know, one of the things I'm hearing coming out, and, and for, for many people who are believers today, they struggle with the idea of faith and works. But, you know, God truly wants to partner with his people, doesn't he? I, yes. I think of Matthew 1130. He says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We have to make that choice. Jesus is knocking on the hearts on our heart's door, isn't he? Mm -hmm. yes. And we have to, as you said, you surrendered to the treatment mm -hmm. so the doctor could perform a, a service that helped you find relief yes. through your alignment. Mm -hmm. And I think about Christ also claiming to be the head of the church. Now, Dr. Lenity, you described something, uh, the, the idea of chiropractic. What, what's the idea of the head flowing? That you have the, the structure? One of the sayings in chiropractic is above, down, and inside out. Um, that is where healing comes from. And you take that to, to really the Father, and that is uh, true of all kinds of healing, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. It comes from above, down, through, through us, and then out and out in the hands, and you think about the church, and so you have the head of, of Christ, you have the church body, and so we all are taking part in the healing um, of hearts, the healing of minds, um, and so there's, uh, I, I just always have loved that that uh, saying came, you know, kind of from chiropractic, above, down, and inside out, because in chiropractic, with the neurological part, we say above, down, you know, through the spinal cord, out through the nerves. You but know, there's Revel a spiritual component, obviously. No doubt. <laughs> you know, it, it reminds me of Revelation chapter 12, where it says the devil's time is short, so mm -hmm. he's going around like a roaring lion. Um, and and uh, it, you mentioned neurological, you know, the, the, the flow from the mind to the body. Is it any wonder the devil is working so hard in our culture mm -hmm. to, to distract us so that we're not following the prescription to stay in alignment? First of yeah. all, to come to Christ, right. and second of all, to follow the, pro the process that he outlines in his word. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? We have to protect ourselves, I think. Um, you know, you have the world, the flesh, and the devil all working you know, against the church. Um, we need to, to put on this, the armor of God and, uh, and, and come together and protect each other and protect ourselves. Um, protect our minds, our hearts, um, because we're under attack. You know, it reminds me of the, t of the time I was running, and I had been running for, for uh, almost an hour, 
and uh, a voice, uh, that impression. I think God's calling to all of us to follow him. Uh, told me to get off the road, and I, and I put it off, and it came to my mind three times. There was no cars coming in front of me. I was running against the traffic. And then by the third time, it was loud in my mind, get off the road now. Mm-hmm. And uh, just f- I finally capitulated and I jumped off the edge of the road, and this car came from behind and flew right behind uh, from behind me and would have run right over me. Mm-hmm. And I really believe the Lord is calling each person and I'm thankful, by the way, that I answered that call. But God was merciful to me. He called three times. Mm. Thank you guys for being on the show today. Thank you for having us. You know, in John 15, 5, Christ says, Without me, you can do nothing. In pondering his claim to be the head of the church, it occurred to me that being out of alignment with Christ can be hazarded to, hazardous to your spiritual health. Mm. We can't realign our souls any more than we can die on the cross to enter eternal life. But when we are aligned with Christ, we become his chosen channels to draw others to get connected with him and find that abundant life. Thank you for watching today. God bless you. Hope on Fire is produced by Livestreams Media, a listener-supported ministry. To download a free copy of today's program or be a part of our social network, please visit our website at hopeonfire.org. You may also contact us by writing to Life Streams Media, P.O. Box 608-513, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Once again, that's Life Streams Media, P.O. Box 608-513, Orlando, Florida, 32860, or online at hopeonfire.org. Thank you so much for your letters and continued support. Until next time, may God set your hope on fire.